Hey guys, Nishquick here. I am recording this video on February 9th, on a Friday, 2024, and it has been a little more than a week since the official release of Persona 3 Reload, the remake of Persona 3. And it's been a week, and I want to give you guys my first impressions on the game. Because those of you who have been following me since last summer when I started talking about Persona 3 and the Persona 3 remake, you guys know I've never played Persona 3 before. I've not played the original Persona 3. I've never played the vanilla version. I've never played Fez. I've never played Portable. I've not played any version of this game. There's so many versions, and this is the first time I'm experiencing it. So I want to tell you how it's going. Because, of course, I'm only about, like, uh, 30 or so hours in. It's a little shorter than Persona 5 Royal, so I'm making good progress, but since it's my first time, since I have experience with Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royal, I want to let you guys know how it's going for me. Just kind of getting my thoughts out there, and maybe, hey, if you haven't given it a shot, if you're on the fence, maybe hearing this video will maybe push you off that fence to maybe purchase the game, or maybe say, eh, this is not for me, I'll play something else instead. But anyways, let's get on with my thoughts on Persona 3 Reload. I have quite a bit to say, and when it comes to this game, I'm gonna start off by saying it took a little bit to get into it, and that's not to say that it was bad, it's not to say the beginning sucked, not to say that I wasn't having a good time, but I feel like the other Persona games really just like had a nice banger of an open. Especially Persona 5 Royal, that is one of the best opening arcs to any Persona game. Persona 4 was nice because I just liked the environment, I liked where you're living, I liked the characters, and the intro kind of like really eased you into the whole vibes and setting of that game. But what I loved initially with Reload is the presentation, the user interfaces, the visuals. I'm playing this on PC and I'm playing it at max settings on the desktop with 1440p, 120fps, reflections on, but then I also switched to Steam Deck. You guys might have seen my Steam Deck tutorial settings video and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but this game looks so, so, so amazing on my PC. So yeah, the pre presentation, not only the UI and the graphics, but just the whole vibe of this game. The more I played the game, the more I started to see how this game is significantly more dreary, darker, and more melancholic compared to the other Persona games. And I've heard about that, I've seen it in the Let's Plays I've watched and the discussions I've had with various friends, but I'm getting to experience this for my first time, and I'm really feeling that heaviness of this game, I guess that's one thing I can call it. Next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay. I was missing some of the gameplay stuff from Royal. When I started to do the social links, I noticed, ah, oh, well, there aren't the confidant perks. Well, that's fine, because I learned to work around that. And there's other things that incentivize you to do social activities in the game. But initially, I just realized, hey, I'm not doing a whole lot of different variety of social activities. I feel like I'm only going to the coffee shop, I'm only doing the coffee shop part-time job, I'm only going here, I'm only doing this, I'm only going to karaoke. And then when I started to do other things, when I started to prioritize other social stats, when I started to do other part-time jobs, I started to see more of what Tatsumi Port Island, what Iwatodai, what this whole region was like. And then I start to really grow on this world around me. And I st start to really get into that gameplay loop. Because with Royal, I just loved how every single thing I was doing outside of the metaverse really significantly impacted me in the game. And I am feeling that with the Reload now. Initially, I it took a little bit to get on my feet. Because so I was like, where are the confidant perks? Where are the things that are going to help me in Tartarus? And then I realized that a lot of the social stack grinding, a lot of the confidant stuff, it really lends into the Persona fusions. And that's something I really neglected in Persona 5 Royal. And now in Reload, I'm really getting in there, really spending some time in the Velvet Room to really get personas that are really powerful, with awesome skills, with a nice boost of XP from my social links, 
and even trying to find some of the personas that'll get my protagonist some of the cool theurgy skills. I love the theurgy skills because it kind of reminds me of, you know in Xenoblade 3 how you have those like talent arts which are activated by the role actions for specific classes of fighters? It's sort of similar. If you do a specific thing with that character, if you do a specific action with one of the characters in Tartarus, it'll fill up the Theurgy meter faster. Like if you inflict debuffs and ailments on characters with Mitsuru, it'll level up faster. If you use buffs and debuffs with Akihiko, it'll level up faster. If you heal with Yukari, it'll fill up faster. Things like that. I thought that was so unique and so cool in a Persona game, and I genuinely like this mechanic way more than the show times. And when I started to get into the swing of things with daily life, with social links, with dorm life, the dorm life is really, really fleshed out, and of course with the Tartarus grinding, I realized how special this game is and how different it is from Royal. I initially realized, initially it was taking a little bit of time to get used to how things are in Reload currently, instead of how I wanted things to be in Reload compared to how things were in Persona 5 Royal. Like no confidant perks, no like large lavish palaces and everything. But I'm really starting to get into that Persona 3 mindset and I'm really appreciating it a lot more. Oh, also one thing I forgot to mention, the music is fantastic. It is so amazing, some of the new tracks are amazing. The battle theme is great, but my favorite track is Color Your Night. It is my new favorite nighttime exploring theme in Persona, even more than Beneath the Mask and Sky Full of Stars from Persona 5 Royal and Persona 4 Golden. Alright, let's start talking about more story stuff now because I am really enjoying the story and I gotta start off by saying I love seas. Initially I didn't think I would really care about them because I saw this let's play of Persona 3 Fez many years ago and I saw that and I thought seas was alright. but. I have to tell you, like I was talking about the presentation earlier, the presentation not only in the visuals and how the characters are redesigned, but the voice acting. Oh my god, the voice acting takes these characters from just a, hey, they're likable, they're, they're cool, to like, wow, I genuinely, actually, really seriously care for these characters. And I have to say, some of the really big standout performances for me are Heather Gonzalez as Yukari, like wow, absolutely phenomenal. Like I remember a lot of people going into this game were saying, oh Yukari's not the best character, Yukari's okay, Yukari whatever, and Yukari's one of my favorite Seize members, I'm being genuinely honest. I really like seeing how she comes to terms with her struggles and how she really overcomes a lot of the hardships she's had in the past. And just seeing her make friends with people around her, especially with Fuka, with the protagonist, and then slowly warming up to characters who she's sort of given the cold shoulder to, like Mitsuru and Junpei, that's really wholesome to see as well. Another favorite of mine is Akihiko, I just think he's a super cool guy, I love Akihiko. Really, really cool, really badass character. And I'm starting to do more of his Link episodes and I'm learning more about his past and he's just a really wholesome, interesting, genuine guy that I didn't really care about when I saw that Let's Play of Persona 3. Now I care about Yukari and Akihiko so much more, significantly so much more, and of course Alejandro Saab does a fantastic, fantastic job bringing him to life. I remember I heard a bit of his performance before the game came out and I was like, whoa, Akihiko sounds like a... He sounds like a grown man, I don't know how I feel about this, but it totally fits. It totally fits because Akihiko is like the big brother of Seas. Everyone looks up to him, everyone thinks he's so cool, everyone thinks he's like so like put together. But just like anyone else, he's got his issues, he's got his problems, but that stern, stoic voice, Alejandro Saab does such a great job with it. 
Another standout performance is Zeno Robinson as Junpei. I have to say, like from the three standouts I mentioned, I think he might be my favorite. He is just he you can tell he's having such an amazing time playing this character. He's having so much fun with this character, so much fun with this role. And that energy, that enthusiasm, that passion is really, really coming out through this role. And shout out to him for an amazing job. Cease is amazing because you really see how things get really personal with them. They have one of the toughest, most like depressing tasks out of any persona party member and it's really tough for them. It genuinely really is. Things get really exhausting, really mentally, physically, emotionally taxing for them. But you see that, they don't hide it and I really love that. I love that they don't shy away from being like, hey, some of this like sucks. I, I don't enjoy doing this. I don't enjoy what's going on right now. I don't want to go to Tartarus. I don't want to put myself through this pain. And you really see that every single one of these characters is going through something, even though they don't talk about it. Some characters might be really hiding it. Like, of course, Junpei is hiding it and you see like, Sometimes when things get tough, when things get rough, he's just really reserved, he's more aloof. You want to know more, you want to know why. And you see Yukari and Mitsuru, who have a really troubled past with their family. And it plays into the story. That's what I love so much about this game. And my friend Arkery was telling me this, and I didn't really get it until I started playing the game. He said, Seize is great because their struggles, their character development plays into the plot of the game. And I, I think that's what made me kind of have that disconnect with Persona 5. I love Persona 5, 10 out of 10, one of my favorite games of all time. But when a character's arc finishes, it's done. And I didn't like that. There's no arcs like that in this game. When Ken joins your party, he's gonna be relevant for the rest of the story. I know he is. When Akihiko joined my party, his relevance maintained. When Yukari met me in the dorm for the first time, I knew that she would be like relevant and be pulling her weight and developing as a character throughout the entirety of the story. And that's so cool, even a character like Shinjiro, I know that I'll get him later on in the story, but he's already being set up as a very interesting, very great, very well-developed character. And yeah, I just love these guys so much, I love the story. I will say, I finished the summer vacation kind of arc in the story, and things started to really pick up then. I have Aegis on my team, and things start to make more sense. And I kept saying this in so many videos, I need to play this game for myself to appreciate it. I need to be the one to play this game because I've forgotten things in the Let's Play that I watched. I can't form my own opinion from hearing someone else play this game or hearing someone else talk about this game. This is a Persona game that is very personal, very story heavy, very character focused, and I'm really, really loving it. Like I said, Earlier, it took a little bit of time to get used to, kind of wrap my head around the mechanics of Persona 3, but I I just love these guys. I love Seize, I love Yukari, I love Mitsuru, Akihiko, Ken, Junpei, Koromaru's best boy as well. I love, I just love that you have a dog in your team in a Persona game. That's, that's just so unique and so cool. I, I'm really enjoying this game and I'm really loving it. This is just my off-the-cuff, kind of unscripted, <laughs> rambling thoughts on this game. It's only been about a week, I'm like 30 or so hours in, I'm in August. Sometime early August, I finished the third or fourth full moon, I think it was the fourth full moon. Don't quote me on that. I don't want to say too much because of spoilers, but yeah, I'm loving this game. Tell, let me know in the comments below, guys. What are you thinking about Persona 3 Reload? I'm just so thankful and happy that I get to play this game for the very first time. And playing it on PC and Steam Deck is such an optimal, fun, relaxing, and rewarding way to play this game. Whenever I feel burnt out on PC, 
just head back to bed and play it on my Steam Deck, chilling in my bed, minding my own biz, as the one and only Lotus Juice says. So yeah, let me know in the comments below, guys. What are you thinking of Persona 3 Reload? Have you been playing it? Are you thinking of getting it? Have you got it? Have you not got it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe for more content like this. This is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like Persona 3 Reload, available on all modern platforms except for the Nintendo Switch. Because I feel confident that it's coming on the Nintendo Switch 2. I'll see you guys in the next one later. Hey guys, this is Nish Quick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left. And if you aren't subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button on the way out? I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and see you later.